Hello again, my friends here at Good Gift City Church. It is always such a joy for me to be able to join you all and have this time of fellowship with you over the Word of God. I want to thank Pastor Derek again for this kind invitation to come here and be with you. I believe God has something more for this church. In fact, that's the title of my message today, Something More. So before we go any further, can we just go to God in prayer? Would you all just bow your heads, close your eyes, wherever you are, tuning in, logging in. We ask God to come and invade this time that you have with us together. Father, I thank you for this very special moment that we have with you as we fellowship over your word. Lord, may your word teach us. May your word come alive for us and may it convict us and lead us in the ways of the Lord. Father, I pray that the words from my mouth and the meditations of my heart, Lord, will be acceptable before you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. You know, there was a newspaper, Peanuts comic strip, where Charlie Brown was asked by his sister Lucy a very deep and profound question. She said, Charlie Brown, what if you could live life in exactly the same way all over again? What would your response be? Charlie Brown looked back at Lucy and asked in all seriousness, You mean exactly as I have lived it? Everything just as it was before? Without hesitation, Charlie Brown replied, Ah! Now what if you and I were given the same option today to live life all over again exactly the same way, pandemic and all? What would be your response? What would be my response? Would it be another, ah? But maybe for many of us, the following words and feelings would better describe us today. Discouraged, disappointed, give up, no point trying, not interested, why not? Uh, why try? No one cares, painful, hurting, depressed. Bopian, bochat. My sense is that as we cross into the new year, 2022, year three of living with COVID, we were not as excited as we should be. Even as we have seen the COVID rules lighten and simplified and then held back again, there's still skepticism, doubt, and much anxiety too. And now, there is the war. I pray that the Word of God today will encourage you. So if you have your Bibles, I'd like to invite you to turn to Isaiah 43, verse 19. I sense that as I entered 2022, this was the word God put upon my heart as a word in season, a word, a promise for us this 2022. And Isaiah 43, 19 says this, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Let me repeat it again. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. As this word came to me, there was a strong sense that, however, that the key thrust of this year is not just about the new things that God wants to do, but about the renewed sense of faith and breakthroughs and the new ways in the wilderness and the new streams in the wasteland. You know, as we all know, the wilderness and the wastelands are not exactly the natural first place that we would go to for anything new. In fact, by definition, the wilderness is a place uncultivated, uninhabited and inhospitable. I call it a place where we have never been before. And the wasteland, it is an area of land unused, barren and even overgrown. I call it a place neglected, left unattended and unused. I believe this 2022, we must be open and ready to see the new ways in the wilderness that God is leading us into. The new streams in the wasteland that He is opening up for us. 
I believe this is going to be a year of great renewal and great revival. Because He indeed is going to be the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, and the light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You see, in broad strokes, 2020 was a year of crisis. 2021 was a year of resets. But this 2022, I believe, is a year of renewed vision. Something new and something more. That's what I believe the title of my message today. Something more God is giving to us this new year. In one sense, it is kind of like a breakthrough kind of year, but yet not breakthrough, but more like breaking through. It is like a process of going through a breakthrough at every level, at personal level, family level, and even at our community too. Now in Isaiah 43, 19, there is, however, a little warning or an alert to us. Because it says, Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? There's a springing up of these new things and it comes suddenly and unexpected. So do you not perceive it? It's an important question that we want to ask today. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, many of us would see and can feel a kind of a distinct shift in the environment and the atmosphere around us. Maybe specifically regards to the crisis and the pandemic, both in Singapore as well as around the world. With some of the measures easing up and yet not quite opening, I still believe that there is a sense of relief and yet an undeniable tentativeness and tension in the transitions. And just this last few weeks, we have the war in the Ukraine. Nothing is quite business as usual. So do you not perceive it is an important question that you and I want to answer today. How then can we perceive the breakthroughs in this new season that God has prepared for us? How then can you and I perceive the breakthroughs in this new season that God has prepared for us? Are there issues, mindsets, perceptions, or even strongholds that will hinder us from experiencing the breakthroughs of God that we have been longing and praying for? You see, God wants to break through into our very lives. I'm reminded of Romans 12, verse 2, where it says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. You see, breakthrough begins when our minds are renewed. Breakthrough begins when our minds are renewed. As we look at Isaiah 43, I see three important mind shifts that will help us unlock this breakthrough that God wants to bring us into in this new season. There's one thing we need to forget and two things we need to remember. They are as follows. Number one, we need to forget the former things. Number two, we need to remember your Creator. Number three, we need to remember your calling. Number one again, forget the former things because you are not what you were. Number two, remember your Creator. He will never forsake you. And finally, number three, remember your calling. There is life after death. So let's start with the first one. What is that one thing we need to forget? Number one, we need to forget the former things. You are not what you were. You know, as the prophet declared in Isaiah 43 verse 19, See, I am doing a new thing. It is so clear in the word of God because in Isaiah 43 verse 18, it says this, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. This is, a clear, this is clear here. One of the foremost and most limiting hindrances to God's new things are the old things. You know, someone once said that history is a good place to learn, but not a good place to live. And many of us would agree. But yet, one of the biggest lessons that we have learned from history 
is that we have never learned from history, isn't it? Why then? Why then is it so difficult to forget the former things? And why is it that the Lord in His Word had to specifically say, forget the former things, do not dwell in the past? You see, even though we know that it is not a good place to be, even though it's not, we know that it's not a good place to dwell in, we have this tendency to go there, to stay there, and often even unwilling to leave. More so, especially with our successes. And we have gotten used even to our successes. You see, if we are honest, we know that that is actually pride. It is when we think that we have achieved and succeeded because of the I, me, and myself. It is so easy to stay in that comfort zone and start letting our past grip us and define who we are and where we feel most affirmed and most appreciated. But the truth is that for breakthroughs can only happen when we learn to forget the former things. When we begin to accept that we are not what we were, God has more. God has more. You see, today's message actually came out of a lunch chat that I had with Pastor Derek at the close of 2021. I was sharing with him some life lessons that the Lord was teaching me in this new season that I'm in. You see, in June 2020, COVID year, I retired from full-time ministry positions in my community services and in the local church too. After nearly 30 years of full-time, time ministry. However, even as I moved out of what I call formal work into what I call now the gig economy, the Lord reminded me over and over again that God's gift and His call is irrevocable. Romans eleven twenty nine. So when this promise in Isaiah forty three nineteen came to me, it became so clear to me that God wants to indeed do a new thing in this new season of my life. So I was personally very special for me. It was literally God moving me from what I call from retirement to refinement. You know, but God had to tutor me and walk me through some of difficult and painful moments to realize that I'm not defined by my name card I'm the card that I carry or the titles and the appointments that I have before or after my name. And one of the first and most important breakthrough points came when I began to embrace this truth that you are not what you were. God wants to do more. That's why I believe God is developing in me a greater sensitivity and appreciation and understanding of many of my generation who are going through this unique season in their life. But yet, as I walk through these struggles in the last two years, which happened to also be the pandemic years, I soon realized that it mirrors the same struggles, issues and challenges that many of us around us, uh, me, are also experiencing too, with or without retirement. And the COVID crisis has also accelerated it, even, and accelerated it even more. Struggles with forgetting our past, it is happening to both of us, to both people inside and outside the church, in society and in the marketplace too. Yes, we often cannot pivot if you are still clinging to your past. You see, everybody still is looking forward and longing for what they call the pre-COVID days. That's why when we start to grapple with this, we realize that we are actually grappling with pride, we're grappling with our holding on to the past, and we're letting our past define us. So after that lunch, Pastor Derek, uh, after that lunch with Pastor Derek, I got home. He sent me a text saying, Come preach at our church what you shared with me over lunch. Well, as they say, there's no free lunch. <laughs> so what then? As we begin to forget the former things and appreciate that we are not what we were, we need to return again to a start point of our faith in God and not in our past glories or even in our past successes. Because as you all know, without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
We must return again to trusting God for everything and that nothing of our own strength. We need to forget and move away from our dependence on the past, especially our past successes too, and to find fresh faith in the present. Going back to Romans 12 verse 3 again, it says, For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Some people have said this, that one of the greatest enemies of faith is not unbelief, but memories. Our memories, both good and bad, can actually paralyze us. You see, a mindset is a mind that is set. And it hinders God's wanting to do something new and something more in this new season. So the big question for us would be, are we willing? Are we willing to forget and return to that simple faith in God? This is the first breakthrough step. Learning to forget our past, learning to come back again to walking in faith and trusting God, which then leads me to what I call the next two things that I need to remember. So how then can we perceive the breakthroughs in this new season that God is preparing for us? Number one, we need to forget the former things. You are not what you were. But number two, we need to remember your Creator. He will never forsake you. You see, Isaiah 43 opens up emphatically with a clear reminder of God, of who He is and who we are before Him. Isaiah 43 verse 1 and verse 3 says this, But now, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, He who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you, I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. You see, as we begin this journey of breaking through into the new things of God, God wants us to forget the former things uh, uh, as the first and most important foundation uh, uh, lesson that we need to get to. But the next important foundation point is that we need to go back to remember your Creator, who He is. And in verse 1, He says, He is the one who created you and formed you. And then when you go down to verse 3, he says, For I am the Lord your God. You see, in this most unique relationship between Creator God and His creation, we are reminded again that we do not need to fear, for He has redeemed us. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine. You see, what a timely powerful and most needed reminder, even for us. Even as Isaiah was speaking to the people of God at large, just as in the days of Moses when the Lord was leading them into this new promised land. Yes, something new, something more. But yet, at the same time, uncertain, unknown, the wilderness and the wasteland. What was the most crucial plea that Moses made, or that Moses and the people made before God. We find that in Exodus 33, verse 15 and verse 17. It says this, Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other peoples on the face of this earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. 
Just note the very intimate and special moment between God and man. The promise of His presence when God said to Moses, I am pleased with you and I know you by name. As they say, this is really all that we need to face any future. You see, when things get unfamiliar and, uh, and when you have to go to places that you've never been before or encounter things that you've never experienced before, it is the abiding presence of our Creator, the one who formed us and when He says to us, I'm going to be there for you. You see, this is the foundational truth of Isaiah 43, verse 19. As God leads His people forward in a time and season with still many unknowns, right? But because we know too well that often new things do not often come in neat packages. Because you know, growing up is never about settling down, but for us to keep on growing. And therefore, it is very natural and normal to be fearful, anxious about the unknowns. Therefore, when you and I embrace this new season, it is also important for us to re remember again our Creator and the plans that He has for us, the plans to prosper us and not to harm us. You see, in whatever season, whatever circumstances or life transitions, whether natural or man-made, this promise that God has for us still holds true today. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. You see, in any state and stage we are in, we have a hope and a future and we can thrive. Not on the basis of what we can or cannot do or done or have not done, but on our relationship and on our identity in the Lord. You see, this always gives me so much hope and confidence that even as the new thing springs up suddenly and unexpectedly before me, He will not forsake me. Another simple, powerful and comforting assurance of His presence and love comes from Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Wow. 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 So you see, in this new season, when sometimes relationships are different, networks change, even your finances and all that you used to get used to gets modified gets adjusted. We know that God is leading us forward and He is indeed not forsaking us. So what do we do? We must remember again, number one, we need to forget the former things because we are not what we were. But number two, and more important, we need to remember our Creator. He will never forsake us. But finally, we need to remember our calling. There is life after death. Now let's take a look at the verses following verse 1 and verse 3. And let's look at Isaiah 43 again, verse 4 to verse 7. And this is what it says, Since you are precious and honoured in my sight, what a lovely verse, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. And I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who has called you by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Then as we go down to verse 10, this is the summary. It says, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me 
and understand that I am He. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. You see, the next breakthrough point to remember as His creation is that He has not only has He formed us, he ha- we have His commission. He has chosen us. He has called us to a divine purpose. We have a destiny, not just personally, but for our family and even for our nation too. So here again are the words, here again in these words, we find deep in meaning and in weight. Because as he reminds us, I will give people in exchange for you. Nations in exchange for your life. You are my witnesses, my servant whom I have chosen. You see, our calling is a calling to a divine exchange. Death for life, life for death. There is a life after death. Or should I say now more, there is only life after death. You see, remember again Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. What did it say? Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, this good, pleasing and perfect will. You see, when I'm sure many of us are familiar with these two verses. You see, you cannot, in one sense, have a mind that is renewed without offering your bodies a living sacrifice. You cannot be a body of a living, or you cannot be a living sacrifice if you do not have your minds renewed. You see, you cannot have one without two, two without one, in that sense. To sum it up, there's one liner that I picked up from Pastor Edmund Chan lately. He says this, The secret to break through is a life yielded. The secret to break through is a life yielded. You see, this is the mindset shift that we must have to experience and embrace and prepare ourselves for the new things that God is leading us to. A yielded life, a life surrendered, a dying to self, a living sacrifice. You see, this is a divine principle here for what I call growth and multiplication. Unless a seed dies, it does not produce many seeds. John 12, 24 says, Truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. See, often people ask this question, Do you have something to live for? But maybe the more important question would be, do you have something to die for? You see, I'm very convicted that all this shaking and even the crumblings of the established institutions during this crisis is really to bring about this important breakthrough lesson for each and every one of us. And that is that a dying to self is really a unique call as a follower of Jesus. A dying to self is our unique and real calling as a follower of Jesus. There's not only life after death, but more correctly, there is life only after death. This is what the Lord Jesus said in Luke 9, verse 23 to 24. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for me will save it. A few months back, I received an audio podcast in one of my chats on my phone. And it was a testimony that really inspired and challenged me because it spoke about the miraculous ways of God when His people begin to live radical surrendered lives, even unto death. You see, this testimony was about a pastor, missionary, who in 
sacrificial obedience answered God's call to go and take a posting in a city in one of the restricted access nations. We had just about six months back, one of his fellow colleague missionary was kidnapped and murdered. He felt such a clear and strong call to return to the exact city and even that same apartment where the last missionary was abducted and killed because he believed God has led him to continue that work. So with fear and trembling, but with much faith and the grace of God, he moved in again and began to settle in and establish his presence in that ministry. Well, it was not long. There came that same knock on the door in the middle of the night. And as he opened the door of his apartment, men in black overalls grabbed him, hooded him and led him away into the dead of the night. They drove out of an hour to a remote part of the city and then they led him through some narrow streets and into a building and down into a dark basement. He was then led into a small hall-like space and when the hood and blindfold was removed, he could barely make out about maybe 300 people in this low-lit, dark hall. And the kidnapper and his kidnapper approached him and spoke directly to him and said, I was the one that kidnapped and killed that last missionary that was staying in that apartment. This pastor immediately called out an urgent prayer, feared for his own life. But the abductor then went on to say, But since that dreadful day, I've had a dream. And in this dream, I hear a voice that said to me, The blood of this man's life is on your hands. But not only me, but here in this room, 300 of us, we all had the same dream on the same night. We are fearful. Can you help us, please? And with tears in his eyes and with a heart full of compassion, he shared with the 300 radical extremists the unconditional, forgiving love of Jesus. And only his blood can pay the price for our sins. Wow! This is the kind of living testimony that is coming out of many of the most difficult places in the world for the preaching of the gospel. Do we have something to die for? If we want to experience the breakthroughs of God that God has prepared for us in this new season, I say again, we need to forget one thing and remember two things. Number one, forget the former things because you are not what you were. Number two, remember your Creator. He will never forsake you. And number three, remember your calling. There is life only after death. So in closing, I believe this is the word of the Lord for us this year. See, I am doing a new thing. I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And I believe God wants to do a new thing for each and every one of us today. You see, when we planned and agreed on this recording of this message today, for the coming weeks, I did not know that it will be recorded today on the fifth day of the Ukraine-Russian war. So just when we thought we were going to get out of the COVID crisis, another world crisis has just literally exploded right in front of us. Like many of you, each day as we watch the news, it has just been one shock after another. There is a helplessness, frustration, and sometimes even anger at the innocent and unnecessary suffering that this conflict has brought. A kind of unbelief that such a war can even happen in a time such as this. And many of us feel overwhelmed 
and helpless. Allow me to read just one update from the Far East Broadcasting Company, Ukraine. FEBC is a Christian broadcast media ministry heard in 145 languages and 50 countries around the world, aired from 149 stations and transmitters. They have one simple and clear vision, committed to one thing, sharing Christ with the world. So this was their update from FEBC Ukraine. February 26, 2022, which is the second day of the war. And this is what it says. Everyone on the team is still alive. Praise God. The control of the radio network has now been transferred from Kiev to the western city of Chernesky. Six out of the seven stations are still on air. We believe the station in Shasta is down, as this town is now 80% destroyed. We do not believe this signal is still on the air. However, the six stations, along with live social media broadcasting, is reaching thousands in real time. In addition, for several years, FEBC Ukraine has been expanding a counselling helpline ministry with trained counsellors who are posted all over Ukraine. They are taking calls almost non-stop. Nina, the leader of the counsellor group, just sent a short update from the counselling team saying, We are exhausted, but working non-stop. We cannot stop now. Normally, we receive about a thousand contacts a day. The volume is more than four times greater. But the need is so great. How can we refuse to answer and pray for those who are terrified, anxious, and desperate. Please continue to pray. At this point of time, I'd like the music to come on and allow us a moment to reflect and have a moment of response. Many of you are probably hearing this message either in the comfort of your home or in a place that you can get internet connection and plug-in. There are no air raid sirens and no bombs landing close by. Would you please say a prayer for our friends and our fellow sojourners living in Ukraine? But more important, I know I cannot let this opportunity or moment go by. Just like those online counsellors from FEBC Ukraine, when they say that they cannot refuse to answer and pray for those who are terrified, anxious and desperate. I believe that some of us, although we are not in a war zone, but there's a war going on in our hearts today. A war of relationships, a war of family, a war of in our work, a war of about where our future would lie, a war in our finances. Maybe for some of you, even from overseas, logging in, you're facing floods, fires, or even natural disasters. There's a war going on. And there's an anxiety, there's a terror, uh, there's, a, there's an anxiety and a desperation. And I believe we cannot refuse to pray for you and with you. Because you see, the Word of God says to us in Acts chapter 2, verse 21, if anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I'm reminded over and over again, John 3, 16, where God says to us, for God so loved the world, that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. Because this Jesus that we put our trust and our faith in, says this to us in John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives to you, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Brothers and sisters, if there's a war in your heart right now, 
in a moment, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And I want to pray with you, and I want you to join me as we pray to the God of peace and allow Jesus to release His peace even into your hearts, into your household, into your families, and into your nation. Because God is here right now and wants to give you His peace. We cannot not pray. Would you pray with me? Would you say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Today, I open up my heart to you. I hand over all my fears, anxieties, and frustrations to you. I invite you to come in and be my Lord and Savior. Today, Lord, I receive the peace that you have promised. And know that from this day on, you will never leave me nor forsake me. In Jesus' precious and powerful name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I want you to know God has heard it. And He will answer that prayer in no uncertain terms. And I believe wherever you are, whether in Singapore or far in another nation, the God of peace will be there for you. But in final closing, I'd like to just offer all of us just a moment. Because this is the moment for us to claim that new thing that God wants to do in our lives. So I want to encourage you to stand where you are, whether you're in your home or in a place that is comfortable. And I'm going to give you a moment to pray what I call a breakthrough prayer. A breakthrough prayer where you believe that something is going to happen in your place, in your location, in your family, in your relationships this coming week. And I believe God is going to reveal Himself to you. So would you do that right now? Would you stand where you are? And as you do that, let us in one minute just ask God for that breakthrough prayer. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are here with us today. And Lord, you have heard the breakthrough cries in each and every one of our hearts. And I believe that this word that you have put in my heart and in our hearts today, that you want to do a new thing and you want to bring new ways in the wilderness and bring new streams in the wasteland. Lord, you are going to answer that promise. So Father, I thank you. And I know that you are here with us and we can submit these breakthroughs to you. Breakthroughs that we have been longing to see. Breakthroughs that we have been praying for. We believe, Lord. And in the coming week, you will reveal yourself to us. We thank you. We bless you. And we receive your promises and your grace in Jesus' name. Amen.